All right, so for chapter three, section five, we're going to be talking about um, the graphical extension of some function algebra. So basically, we want to know, well, what's going to happen when we perform certain operations on a base function, or what I'm going to refer to as a parent function. So we have some graphs of some basic functions here. So that we should be familiar with. So the first one is y equals x, which is the identity function. We have the squaring function, y equals x squared, which is a parabola with vertex at the origin, the cubic function, square root function, cube root function, our reciprocal function, and the absolute value function. So these are their basic graphs, or what I'm going to call the parent function. If we know these basic graphs, we can construct the graph of combinations of these functions using the following table of rules. So given the basic graph y equals f of x, where b is a positive number, the absolute value of c is bigger than 1, and the absolute value of d is less than 1, we have the following. So if you take a basic function or a parent function and add b to it, Graphically, it's going to shift the graph up b units. If you subtract b from it, it will shift it down b units. If we do function composition with x plus b, it is going to shift the graph to the left b units. If we do function composition with x minus b, it will shift the graph to the right b units. If we multiply a function by the scalar c, where the absolute value of c is bigger than 1, it's going to stretch the graph by a factor of the absolute value of c. If c happens to be a negative number, then it will also reflect the graph across the x-axis. For our next row, if the absolute value of the scalar is less than 1, that means we're using d, then it's going to shrink the graph by a factor of d. And then if d is a negative number, it will also cause a reflection across the x-axis. If we use c and d again, but this time as composition, if we multiply by c, where c in absolute value is bigger than 1, it shrinks the graph by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of c, and the graph is reflected across the y-axis if c is negative, and we get a similar result for d. If the absolute value of d is less than 1, then it's going to stretch the graph by a factor of 1 over d, and the graph will be reflected across the y-axis. All right, so we are going to refer back to this table as we go through these examples. So we wish to describe how the graph of g of x, which equals 1 half times x minus 3 squared plus 4, can be obtained from the graph of x squared. So this is going to be our basic, or our parent function. And we want to identify, well, how is the graph of g of x, which equals 1 half times x minus 3 squared plus 4, how is it going to be obtained from our basic squaring function graph? So let's go ahead and look at each of these three parts. So I have a 1 half out in front. On the inside, I have an x minus 3 that is being squared. And then on the outside, I have a plus 4. Let's start, I have a 1 half 
times something on the outside. So that puts me down here in these two rows. And then I have to decide whether or not I'm using C or D. Well, 1 half is less than 1 in absolute value. So that is going to be our D row in our table. So we're going to get this. So we know it was D because our number is equal to 1 half, and the absolute value of 1 half is less than 1. So if that's the case, we know then that this is going to 1 shrink the graph by a factor of 1 half. Since 1 half is bigger than 1, it is not going to do, or since 1 half is bigger than 0, it is not going to cause a reflection to occur. So now we go to our next piece, and we have x take away 3. Well, that's going to put us in this row right here. So we identify with our x minus b is x minus 3. So this is going to, to shift the graph right three units. That's going to take our graph and move all of its outputs to the right three units. Lastly, we have in green our plus four. That's going to put us in row number one. So our plus b in this case is 4, so that's going to shift the graph up 4 units. Alright, so now This gives us the three things that we would need to do to that graph in order to transform x squared into 1 half times x minus 3 squared plus 4. So we'd have to shrink the graph by a factor of a half. We'd have to shift the graph right three units. And then we would have to shift the graph up four units. So I outlined these steps. And I want to ask you the following question, and I want you to think about it for a second. Does the order that I do these three things in matter? All right, so let's go ahead and resolve this. So we look inside our absolute values first. We have an x plus 5, so that's going to shift left. Five units. 
Our next thing that we're going to look at is the multiply by 3 on the outside. So that's going to stretch by a factor of 3. And our last thing is going to be the minus 1 on the outside. And that's going to shift down one unit. So that follows our order of operations. The red taking place in parentheses, the green in multiplication, and the add and subtract happening last. So that would be our way to obtain our graph. So our next example is interesting because we can actually think of it in two different ways and get the same correct answer both times. So that's one thing we need to be aware of when we're working with these shifts is that there's multiple ways to visualize the problem sometimes. But no matter which way you visualize it, as long as you follow the output of that chart, you're going to get the same correct answer. So we have our parent function f of x is 1 over x, and we have g of x. So g of x can be visualized in two different ways. So one way to visualize g of x would be as f of x composed with 10x plus 5. The second way to visualize g of x would be 1 over 10 times f of x plus 5. So in each of these visualizations, one we're doing function composition and one we're doing multiplication. So if I replace the x in 1 over x with 10x, what do I get? 1 over 10x, okay, plus 5. And if I take f of x, which is 1 over x, and I multiply it by 1 over 10, what do I get? 1 over 10x, right? So both of these give us a correct way to decompose or write as a product. And then we can look at our chart. So if we do a composition with 10x, 10 is bigger than 1. So that's going to be our C. That's going to give us this. It's going to shrink our graph by a factor of 1 over C. In this case, we have our C is 10. So we're going to shrink by 1 over 10. The next thing we have is just the plus 5. Oops, orange. Here's the plus 5, and that's just going to make us go up by the end. All right, if we visualize what we have over here, this time we have 1 over 10 times x. Well, 1 over 10 times x puts us up here, and 1 over 10 is less than 1. And that's going to give us this. So we have 1 over 10 for our d, so d equals 1 tenth, so 1 we're going to shrink by 1 over 10, which is the same thing, and the plus 5 will still shift us up 5 units. 
So the reason I mention this is if you're talking to someone else doing your homeworks, talking to a tutor, they may visualize the problem in a completely different way. And that's fine. You will get the same answer in the end. So I am goal-oriented, not path-oriented. If you see it the first way, that's great. If you see it the second way, that's also great. We get you the same thing at the end of the day. All right, so let's jump to example three. So this time, our problem is a little bit different in the sense that we are not given an explicit function, but rather we are given a graph and we are asked to create a new graph based on our old graph. So let's take a look at our parts. So in here I have a negative 2. So if I have negative 2 times f of x, what is that going to do to my graph? Well, it's actually going to do two things. So one, it's going to reflect across the x-axis. And two, it's going to stretch by a factor of the absolute value of negative two, which is two. The plus 3 is just going to shift the graph up. All right, so we start with our basic graph. And so we need to, we have this line segment that's at negative 2. We need to reflect it over the x-axis and then stretch it by a factor of 2. So that's going to put it at positive 4. Then we need to take this part and do the same thing. So we flip it over to negative 3 from positive 3 and then stretch it by a factor of 2, which takes it down to 6. And we connect our pieces. So that's our first part. Part two says then we're going to shift this entire graph up three units. So one, two, three. Shift it up one, two, three. And one, two, three. And the graph in orange is our final solution of what we would get for the graph of g of x, which is negative 2 f of x plus 3. So we can graphically do what we were asked to do. It's also worth noting, if we were to start with this original graph right here, what's this ordered pair? Negative 2, negative 2, right? Oh, negative 1, thank you. Negative 1, negative 2. So if we want to calculate g of negative 1, well, g of negative 1 is negative 2 times f of negative 1 plus 3, which is negative 2. Well, f of negative 1 is negative 2 plus 3. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So g should contain the point negative 1 and 7. Oh, that's exactly this point, right? We can numerically calculate all of this stuff by just putting in the known values, right? That's really the idea, is this is really just function algebra, but what are we doing it? We're doing it graphically as opposed to numerically. So we can calculate things directly by just plugging them in if we need to. All right. All right, so let's talk about our U tries. So for U try 2, we have g of x is 1 over x plus 5. We recognize this as 
we have an x plus 5 on the inside. So this is function composition. So it's g of x plus 5, or g of x is equal to f of x plus 5. So that's going to shift left 5 units because we replaced our x with x plus 5. For our next one, we have an x minus 6, so that's going to shift left 6 units, and then we have a plus 7, and that's going to shift up 7 units. And so if we imagine just picking this graph up, if I move it, sorry, it's right. It goes right. Six units because it's minus six, so it's going to the right. We pick up our graph, and we are going to move it to the right six, and then move it up seven. So we go one, two, three, four, Five, six, and then up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we go right six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, up seven. And we get a graph that looks something like this. <laughs>